If you are looking for a way to create budget-friendly transfers and have unlimited image options, then you're in the right place. Hi friends, this is Kim from Creative DIY Purpose. Today we will be making DIY transfers and applying them to thrifted items to give them a makeover. I will be sharing helpful tips for creating quality transfers printed out on rice paper. You can find this tutorial written over on my blog along with free printables and any products used in this video are all linked down below. So come on, let's get started. Before we upcycle our projects today, we're going to make a few transfers. We only need a few supplies, and the first one being a basic inkjet printer. The rice paper that I use is linked below. It does come a little bit larger than a standard sheet of paper, so we're gonna cut that part off. And I made these little cards for anyone that would like to take a screenshot, but I will go ahead and read it as I walk you through the process. So for printing on the rice paper, you're going to want to print on the textured side of the paper. There are two different options to printing, just like with the freezer paper. You can cut the rice paper to a standard sheet and run it right through your printer that way. Or if your printer tends to be a little touchy, you're going to probably want to cut the rice paper a half of inch shorter around all four sides and then tape the rice paper onto a sheet of cardstock. It works best if you do not scotch tape over the edge, but just lay the scotch tape firmly on the top of the pages. And then you are ready to make some beautiful, colorful prints. For project number one, I'm gonna be using one of the new printables from the herb seed packets. It's actually the lavender, which was also in the flower one from last week. You can resize those seed packages and that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna make a little sign. I'm, I'm applying two coats of gesso and then some of the DIY paint and vintage linen. I resized the image over in Canva to be able to fit this wooden board. I did get the sign for free from a friend because she knew I would wanna upcycle it. You can apply your rice paper transfers on with just about any type of glue. Depending on the size of the project, I've used a glue stick Mod Podge, which is what I use in all of these projects today. I've used spray adhesive, as well as a homemade Mod Podge made with regular school glue. And you definitely want to make sure you're not applying too much. I love how the colors come out very rich and the prints are very detailed and rice paper is very durable, budget friendly, and with any of the other DIY transfers, it's just unlimited options for design. For this next project, we're going to be doing a challenge for me. We're going to do a two page transfer. Some of you may recognize that printable because we've, we've used it for one of the freezer paper projects. So. The tray was very pitted and scratched, but it only took one coat of the Rust-Oleum, the two-in-one spray paint, so I was happy about that. I did some fine grit sandpaper to the wooden handles just to take off some of the varnish and just applying a thin coat of Mod Podge. I still struggle with trying to get two pieces of the rice paper in the middle to meet up where you can't see that line. If doing a two-page transfer, I'd much rather use the freezer paper, but I think this, this ended up okay. Because rice paper is a little thicker, it's more of a challenge to apply to pieces with curves and small details. Now, if you do apply a lot of Mod Podge up over the top as a sealer, the ink can reactivate and run, which we will address later in today's video. And because it's on a white paper backing, it's going to show unless you apply it on a white painted background. So for our next project, we've got this cute little watering can. I did like the print that was on it, but it was on cardstock and it was actually peeling off. I did cheat and instead of removing all of the cardstock, 
I applied some homemade textured paint. I kind of wanted to see if the rice paper would adhere to it, and it did. So the image that I'm using is one of the French ads from over at thegraphicsfairy.com. And I added two bird images over on Canva. And this print printable you've seen before in previous projects, but it is available over on my blog for you to use if you'd like. So when I got the label all put on there, I used a Sharpie paint marker. I forgot that I had this marker. I purchased it two years ago and couldn't believe that it still worked. I wanted it to kind of look like enamel wear, but very worn. And I want to thank my sister for these beautiful lilacs because mine probably won't blossom for another few weeks. Do any of you have lilac bushes where you live? I just planted one, I believe three years ago that my mom gave me. Here's a few tips that worked for me, so I wanted to share them with you guys. I try to wait at least 10 minutes after printing my image before applying it to the surface so that the ink has a chance to soak into the paper. I also try to wait for the image to dry before applying the sealer on top of the image. I found that these tips really help so that I don't reactivate and smear the ink. I found that dabbing the Mod Podge as opposed to brushing it when you're using it as a sealer has less chance of smearing the ink as well. You can test your favorite sealer on a sample piece of printed rice paper before applying it to your finished project just to see how your sealer will react. All right, so speaking of my sister, her son had his sixth birthday and he loves dinosaurs. I just wanted to share this with you guys really quick. I went on to Canva, just printed out this little dinosaur sign. I think I got this canvas from the Dollar Tree. Thin coat of Mod Podge onto the canvas. And then you want a very firm surface. I should not have used the cardboard on the bottom. It's a little too padded. I applied Mod Podge in small sections and flipped it over so it would have a firm surface. Because if you just go to push down on it, because the canvas isn't stable in the middle, your image will bow and wrinkle. So this worked out and, and I applied two coats of the spray sealer from Rust-Oleum. Next project is this thrifted silver plated plate. It was very pitted and scratched. I did clean it, but it didn't make too much of a difference. I'm applying some chalk paint and I decided it was just too heavy looking so when i went to wipe it back it really brought the detail out so i just went with it looking back at it now because the rice paper is kind of like an off-white i wish i would have used off-white paint instead of that cream color but that's okay i might end up redoing this piece i don't sometime in the future for you guys i did apply a coat of the Rust-Oleum spray sealer over the entire piece. So this was the first for me applying an image to a plate. This is one of the free graphics that is available over on my blog along with the image that we did in last week's project. I applied the Mod Podge right on the center of this little glass plate and then just pressed it down right where I wanted it. I may or may not have gotten a little too much Mod Podge on there, but it it didn't run. And then I applied Mod Podge to each section, folding it over. And there's a few wrinkles, but I didn't mind. There I am just trying to smooth out some of the bigger ones. I applied a paper doily on to the back over the rice paper image. And then over the rice paper image, I did apply a coat of gesso so that it wasn't so transparent and that really helped to make the colors pop i had to share this beautiful bouquet that my husband brought me home yesterday i thought it was perfect for this video all 
All right, now we're gonna take a look at photo transfers. Using my copy machine on my printer, I made a copy of a picture of my mom when she was little. Both of these copies have been printed on rice paper. I'm applying an even coat of Mod Podge onto the wooden planks. On the first board, we're going to take the image in reverse and place it down into the Mod Podge. I did learn from doing this that you want to make sure that there's no brush strokes in your Mod Podge because I'll show you in the end how you can see the brush strokes in the final product. So of course, as I'm doing this, the curiosity got to me and I just wondered if the image was transferring onto the wood and it did start to transfer through onto the wood. Now I did take another piece and allow the Mod Podge to sit on for about eight hours and then try to rub it off like you would with the reverse transfers for photos. And it, I don't know if it was the rice paper or I put too much Mod Podge, but there was no way it was coming off. So I'll try again sometime soon, but I thought that we would go with these two for, if you don't have a copy machine, you could always take it to an office supply store or some local libraries may even have them. This is the way that they came out and they sat overnight, but see how you can see the brush strokes. And I just added some vintage lace that my mom gave me and, and some fabric flowers. And I think I'm going to hang that on our Christmas tree. Christmas so tree other this year. than that last project, this is a spray sealer that I use on top of all of the items that were in this video today. It's usually my go-to. And I think Walmart is where they carry it the cheapest. Friends, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've ever tried the rice paper transfers or, and how you liked them. And if you have any questions that I might be able to answer, just leave me a comment and I'd love to get back to you. Have a super blessed week and I'll see you soon.